welcome back to my channel. My name is Tatum Tamia. I'm the host of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast and the CEO of Anchor Media and Anchor Media Studios, which is where we're shooting from right now. In today's video, and this will actually probably be a two-parter, we're going to be talking about how to realistically become more like the Proverbs 31 woman. Now, I talk about this heavily in my book, She is Uncompromising. You can get it on my website, TatumTamia.com. Now, this is a section in my Bible when I tell you it should be holes in it by how much it's been scribbled, written, highlighted, underlined, starred, asterisk. Like, this is the most marked up section of my Bible because every time I feel like I encounter a new life change or, you know, life just begins to evolve, things may get busy, I go back to it like, okay, God, show me something else. Show me something else. And so for these next two videos, I want to point out just some things that stood out to me, some revelations that I got from it in order to help you become more like the Proverbs 31 woman as well. And I have my phone here because I'm going to read some of the exact scriptures that you can find in Proverbs 31. So the first element to being a Proverbs 31 woman is understanding that she is a true helpmate. It's to understand that she's trustworthy and she's a true helpmate. So in verses 11 through 12, it says her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Now, when I got married, this is one of the times I'm in this book, like, okay, because I was very big on, poor BJ, just pray for him, y'all. When we were dating, <laughs> I was very big on like, hey, uh, you're not my husband, so we not finna act like it. <laughs> so I'm not prioritizing you over my business. And before we got married, we were shacking. I'm not promoting it. I'm just telling you my truth. We were living together. And so I'm like, listen, just because we live together don't mean that you finna be acting like my husband because you ain't. So certain things will come up. I'm like, mm, you've reached capacity of boyfriend level. I'm not doing that. So... <laughs> When I got married, I'm like, dang, I've been talking trash for like the last year about how <laughs> he done reached boyfriend level. Uh, he graduated. So, <laughs> God, what, what is life <laughs> going to look like now? Because I've really been running my mouth. And reading Proverbs 31, uh, just talking about being a helpmate and being trustworthy. One of my big things was before we got married, going to premarital counseling. And so he wasn't, he wasn't against it. It just wasn't that big of a deal to him. It wasn't like, for me, it was, I'm not marrying you until we go to premarital counseling. For him, it was just like, I mean, it's cool. So because it was such a, a big deal for me, we went. And that was a big part of learning how to be a helpmate and not just a helpmate, but BJ's helpmate. And I think that that's where a lot of, I get annoyed by all of the a lot of the relationship talk that I see on the internet, and I really don't partake in it too much, but a lot of it that I see on the internet, is just a bunch of single people discussing what they may or may not do when they get married. Or a bunch of married people discussing what they do in their household, which may not work for your household. And the most important thing when you're dating, especially if you're going to marry somebody, because who you marry will make or break your destiny. It's such a, I feel like we prioritize the wedding so much. A marriage will make or break your destiny. It's such a serious decision that shouldn't be made on just emotion and how you feel or how fine he is. It should not. It is a spiritual and logical decision. You ain't going to always have those butterflies. He ain't going to be fine all the time. We ain't sitting on a toilet and all of that stuff that you see in the house. He ain't that fine no more right there. Like, it's just not a, It's. it cannot be a vain decision. And so... Uh, it was huge for me to learn how to be BJ's wife. And I don't think that people emphasize that enough that I just, I don't need to just learn how to be a wife. I need to learn how to be my husband's wife. Cause I might be out here taking all the cooking classes. I hate cooking, but the internet says that I have to learn how to cook in order to be a wife, but your husband may like to eat out and don't care about that. He might be a chef himself and be like, girl, I don't care about you cooking. I want to do this for you. So now you don't stress yourself out because of whatever the world is telling you to do when your actual person that God created for you doesn't need that from you. And so for me, pre medical counseling was huge because I want to know you on a deeper level to learn how can I make your life easier? How can I bring you good and not harm? all the days of your life. And so one of the things that I do is I'm always praying. One thing I know about my husband is he's very laid back. 
he is a people pleaser in a sense. Like he, he's not going to let anybody take advantage of him, but he's very much so a giver. And it's his nature to always sacrifice himself for somebody else. Like it could be a blizzard. He could see that you're cold. He will give you his shirt, his coat, his socks, his shoes, and he will catch pneumonia just so that you can be warm. That's his personality. It's who he is. And so for me, it's my job as his wife to protect that. I'm the bulldog. I'm the, nah, you ain't giving him your shirt because then what you going to do? That's me. So I protect him in that way. But also a flaw-ish of mine is I can be a spoiled princess. So <laughs> my uh, parents would like, B <laughs> BJ, we sorry. <laughs> it's our fault. Why she be acting like this? But understanding that about myself, I can sometimes be one of the ones taking right? Letting him do whatever for me because that's his nature. Now, I'm going to get catered to, but at the same time, it, I have to make sure, how can I make your life easier? I know you do the dishes all the time because that's, you know, your thing, that's a chore that you took on in the house. But every now and then after I cook, let me just do the dishes too, to just do acts of service to make sure that your life is a bit easier. I see the things that you're communicating and you may not tell me, hey, can you pray for me for this? But let me just make sure in my prayer time, I cover this as well. I see you doing this and not complaining. So let me try to accommodate that for you. And I, that's something I do all the time, just paying attention and asking God and also paying attention to his uncommunicated desires so that I can be a good help me. And that's one of my prayers all the time. God, it's not in BJ's character to be like, I need this from you. So how can I serve him today? It's hard to do when you're mad, but you know, it's something I try to do often. Like, how can I serve him? How can I be his, a better helpmate? Show me the flaws and the areas in myself. And God shows me those things. He'll tell me things to do. Hey, send him a, a, a really nice text today. And I'll do that. Hey, show him some extra affection today. I'll get in prayer or something like that. And I'll go sit on his lap because I'm not naturally a super affectionate person. So just go and sit on his lap, do a bunch of extra little cute stuff. He likes that, right? It's just, it's small stuff, not huge, but just really making, being mindful and present in my home and attentive to the uncommunicated desires of my husband so that I could be a trustworthy helpmate. Having a relationship with God, covering him in prayer, so that I can be a good helpmate, hearing from God and being willing to God, for God to show me myself, to correct me. One of the best pieces of advice that I got before I got married was before you take your issues to your husband, pray about them first. And that's something I, I did even when we were dating. I was like, what? Because again, my mouth, I'll say how I feel. But it's something I started doing where I was like, God, man, he may be mad because he did this or he did that. And God's like, but you did this. You did that. So why don't you start doing this? Don't don't say nothing about that. And it'll be things that I'll talk to God about, not say it to him, that he'll come and maybe apologize for, or that he'll be like, all right, hey, I, I noticed this. I'm going to start doing that. And I'm like, oh, this really worked. It was so many times I was like, oh, okay, okay. That, that was some very wise advice. But again, I suggest all of you guys who are married or preparing to be married, take these last nine and a half minutes <laughs> and apply that, take whatever is relevant to you and apply it and, and utilize it for how you can be more like the Proverbs 31 woman in this way. Another characteristic of the Proverbs 31 woman comes in verse 20. It says, she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. So this is all about just kindness and generosity and being a giver. So just always look for opportunities that you can give. I think a, a, the root of this is really humility. How can you give? For me, I don't think that I'm naturally a huge giver. I don't go like tossing money around all the time, but I'm definitely always looking for opportunities to where I can help people, right? I help people in business, but also it may be something like the society where we do this every year. I don't really broadcast it, but around the holiday time, people are going through real stuff, especially the last few years. It can be as simple as facilitating 
an opportunity for people's needs to be met. Like, I don't have enough money to save the world, but I can facilitate an opportunity to help people get their needs met. So like even in the society, uh, when COVID first hit, it was a simple of, hey, is anybody in need this season with things shutting down? Hey, if it, if does, is anybody able to contribute to help our sisters in this community to be able to uh, meet their needs this season? Man, we was have people's mortgages were getting paid, bills were getting paid, groceries were getting purchased. It were so many things, and I gave a, a I gave money, but I couldn't have done that myself. Like I couldn't have met all of those needs myself. So it's bigger than just you know. It can be bigger, in my opinion, embodying this than just what you can give. But how many opportunities can you cultivate? for people's needs to be met. We do this even in the holidays with the society. The last couple of years, I think we've raised a couple thousand dollars. Well, this year I think it was like 1,300 or something. Last year it was like 1,600. But just able to give, put some money in people's pockets, help them with what they have going on in the holiday season. It's just an opportunity to give. The Bible says, give and it shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And so we should, we should be women who uh, care who give, who cultivate opportunities to help people who are kind. In, in this day and age, kindness is so easy to do, but it's so hard to find. I remember I was working with a videographer and she was going through some things personally. And she had missed a couple deadlines about when it came to like the video and stuff like that. And I was really kind of like, hey, it's okay. Like, I understand you have a lot going on. Just let me know when you're able to get it to me. I don't think I did anything extra besides just be kind and understanding and give grace. And I remember she had hit me up maybe like a month or so after that. And she asked, cause she uh, dropped something off. She had something for me cause she dropped it off at the office. I was like, yes. Yeah. So I told her when I was there, she came and met me. She gave me this card and it, it made me tear up. She said, hey, one of my parents passed away. And it was a really tough time, but I'm so grateful for you just giving me grace and for your kindness. And I was like, dang, like, I wasn't even thinking of it as like, well, let me be nice because I'm going to get something from it or anything like that. But just giving people grace and kindness is so, so, so important because you never know what people are going through these days. And I know people have extended me grace and kindness when I've been going through things as well. And so it's important that we just keep that in mind, not be so critical. I mean, in this social media age, you get all of these negative comments and everybody got something to say. Everybody an expert on everything. Everybody criticizing everything. It's we should just be kind and keep that in mind and be givers. And the last characteristics of a Proverbs 31 woman, of course, is that she's a God-fearing woman. So verse 30 says, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. I get questions all the time about people who, you know, hear the message of make God the CEO, seek God on behalf of your business. All of these things about, well, how do I do this God's way? How do I... Uh, do my business God's way, all of these things. You have to know God to know how to do things his way. We can't put the cart before the horse. You have to have a relationship with God. You need to know the word so that you can live the word out. You need to know how to hear from God. I always say, don't start no business. Don't be trying to do without being first a God-fearing person, someone whose life is subject to him. And I feel like these days, especially with like online entrepreneurship and everybody trying to achieve something, we lose the fact that we are his servants, not the other way around. If God never gave you any of the things that you, you put on your vision board this year, if he chose not to, would you still serve him? If your business never became successful, would you still serve him? These are tough questions that you have to ask yourself. And if the answer is no, be honest. I'm not going to judge you. Be honest. If the answer is no, then you got to go back to the foundation. Having a relationship with him again by learning your word, not secondhand faith, not you only hear the word from the perspective of the preacher or the teacher or pastor that's communicating it to you, but you understanding the text for yourself, the context, the intent behind it, the time that it was in, the message, how it's relevant to you today, all of these different things, how you can live it out, a true understanding of the word so that you can live it out in your life. That's what you need. 
You have to be a God-fearing woman. You have to be someone who spends more time on her face, spends more time in the presence of God than you do in all of the hats that you wear. You have to be able to operate based on his principles. And I feel like that gets so lost these days, especially in a lot of the teachings and the things of that nature is we stick with the cute stuff the fun stuff, the uh, exciting scriptures that he'll supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He'll do exceedingly and abundantly above anything I could ask for or think. I am the lender and not the borrower. I'm ahead and not beneath. Like all of these things that are facts is scripture, but also if you're knee deep in debt, are you going to still serve God? When your life doesn't look like what the promise is, would you still serve him or are you going to give up? One of the things that I was having a conversation with a friend uh, yesterday, she was just talking about this hard area that she's really believing in God for and she's not seeing the fruit of her prayers yet. She was saying like she really found herself like not even talking to God about it because she felt like it'll impact her faith if she focuses too much on her disappointment in this particular area. And I was telling her, I'm like, I was validating her feelings because I get it. You know, it was, I remember even when I was trying to have my son and I talk in my book about my history of miscarriages and struggles to conceive and uh, carry the term. And I was telling her when we were talking about this man in that season, one of the hardest things, and I had to be honest with God, one of my foundations of me and God's relationship is honesty and vulnerability. I say, God, it is very hard to know that you're a miracle worker, to know that you can solve this problem for me instantaneously and you haven't. That hurts my feelings. That makes me actually pretty upset because I'm telling everybody else and, and, and I'm reading this word. I know this word. It's in my heart. I know the magnitude of who you are, but you're choosing not to take this burden for me. Why not? And that's real. That's a real emotion that we all are going to face, knowing that God is all powerful and yet he chooses not to solve whatever this hard place is and whatever, you know, because it may be a not yet thing, but it's still like it's tough. That is tough. But in, even in that place, will you still serve God? My husband was watching um, The Chosen recently. I haven't sat down to watch too much of it. Uh, usually when I watch TV, it's like at the end of the day. I don't like to watch stuff deep. Just let me watch something that's light or whatever. And that's a show that I know I really want to pay attention to and uh, compare it to the scripture. And I just haven't had time to really do it. But he watches it pretty often. And so it was one part I just happened to come into the room where it was on, when it was on. And one of the disciples, um, Jesus had just met with all the disciples and let them know, like, hey, y'all my people and y'all finna go out and tell the word about world about me. Right. And so um, this particular disciple, I can't remember which one it was. He was sick or had some type of ailment. And he went up to Jesus. They had already left. Everybody was out. Jesus was going wherever he was going. So he walked up to him and was like, can I ask you something? And Jesus was like, of course. And he was like, so you trust me to go out and tell people about like how you're such a healer and tell people about the greatness of who you are. But I have this issue and you haven't healed it yet. Like I'm not healed. I'm going to go out and tell everybody about the miracles that you perform, but I need one and you ain't done it. And Jesus, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he essentially told him, I could heal you right now. I'm not for a reason, essentially. Like, how much more powerful will your message be if, if, if you can go out and tell these people about the magnitude of who I am, even if you're still waiting for this particular promise? And uh, the disciple started crying and he just accepted it. And in my mind, I'm like, he probably was still kind of like, I mean, but like, is that really necessary? Because that would have been my response. And I think that God knew I need to be born within a certain time period. Because I've been reading the Bible sometimes, especially reading the, the New Testament and the stuff Jesus was saying. And I'd be like, so why do you even have to go through all that? Were half of these parables necessary? We could have just went straight to the point, right? Like, I am like, Jesus, what you saying? So, <laughs> but I could tell in that moment that he was probably still like, I mean, that sounds profound and great, but also this hip, you know, what I mean? cause that's what I would have been like, I mean, cool, but like, I'm out here telling them, but I'm limping, I got a cane, like, come on, God. Okay, like I would 
have been a little irritated by it. I'm not even going to lie. But the point is that there's a reason. There's a method. God, we play the short game. God plays the long game, the eternal game. And we have to, when you're truly somebody who, uh, you're truly a God-fearing woman, you have to honor God and follow him when you don't understand what's going on. You have to follow him and push through those real emotions of, God, you're a healer, but you ain't healed me. You got to persevere through that. Long suffering is a fruit of the spirit for a reason, right? We're all going to have to suffer through something, but we have to be patient in affliction. But we have to take Romans 12, 12 into consideration. I'm going to read it. It says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. This is something that I hold close to me whenever I'm really waiting for the fruit of something I'm believing in God for and I'm getting frustrated by it. I go back, Tatum, be joyful in hope, be patient in affliction, be faithful in prayer and continue to go out and serve the Lord despite how you feel or your circumstances. Like that's just a posture, a reverence, a love and a commitment that we have to have as God-fearing women. That's not contingent upon what we see or whether we see the fruit of anything. Why does God have to do anything else for us? He already sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. He already made it so today we don't have to go to the temple to be able to, to uh, spend time with him. We don't have to sacrifice rams and goats and all of that in order to be forgiven for our sins. We don't have to go to a third party. Jesus ascended to heaven and sent us the Holy Spirit. So we have so many luxuries that we take for granted. Why does God have to do anything else for us in order for us to love, reverence, and respect him? And I feel like if you're in a place where you're not truly God-fearing or you're not loving God to that level or have that level of commitment, then you have to deal with that. Before we can go out and do all of these great, magnificent, Instagram worthy things. So the Proverbs 31 woman in her core was a God fearing woman. And we have to be God fearing women, women who are committed to the Lord. And make sure you get my new book, She's Uncompromising, A Christian Woman's Guide to Mastering Motherhood, Business, and Everything in Between. Available now on my website at tatentania.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss when I post another video. And I'll see you in the next one.